It's 9.27. We'll just wait for a few more minutes. Uh, some parents are still uh, coming in. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, good morning. Am I audible? Yes, Mr. Yes, Mick, you are. I'm on. Did you get your good morning, Mr. Did Mick. you get your second cup of coffee, Mick? <laughs> Did it? Yes. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. I see a lot of people are just joining now. Hi, Ganesh. Hi, Sindhu. Sindhu, are we supposed to be here or at the next meet? No. It's up to you if you want to uh, see us, hear oh. us. <laughs> okay, fine. Hello, good morning. This is Ganesh. Morning. Good morning. Hi, Monday. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Shall we get started? Yes, Mr. Mick. I see a few others are joining right now, so maybe we'll wait one, one or two more minutes, okay? All right. I guess at this time to make uh, 
to make things a little bit easier for all of us, I'll suggest that you turn your microphones off and your cameras off, except for those of us who are presenting. We will have uh, questions throughout the presentation and we can all also use the chat box. I think for most of you, you'll see the chat box as a text box on the lower right, right part of the screen. So uh, feel free to use that. Perhaps you can say good morning or hi or uh, something like that, just to see that um, the text box is text box is working. Hmm. Hi, hi, Srini. Hi, good morning, Natash, etc. Okay, great. And then I see that some of you have figured out how to use the hand raise already. So, Ganesh, hello. I don't know if you're raising a hand to ask a question or say no, hi. No, this is Chick. Just this Chick. Yeah. No, my guess just to check it's working or not. Good morning. Uh, okay, so let's get started. Are you hearing me, Sindhu? Yes, Mick. Do you Loud hear me? Now? Okay, great. Yes, Mr. Mick. Okay, I'm having a few connectivity issues, but I think I'm back on now. Uh, so good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining our virtual open house. My name is Mick Purcell. I'm the head of school at KC High, and uh, welcome and we hope you're all staying safe and avoiding COVID and avoiding public places and following all the safety procedures. Of course, uh, our school, like everyone in Chennai, has been impacted by COVID lately. Uh, but the good news is that starting this coming week, we will be returning to school. Uh, we know how to do it pretty well. We had about four months of in-person school in 2021. Uh, we follow the safety protocols very strictly. And as far as we know, we didn't see any evidence of any COVID transmission on campus. Uh, the safety protocols, the masking, the social distancing, the hand washing uh, really seems to be working and the work environment and the school environment at KC High seems to be safe. So we will be bringing learners back to campus uh, on Tuesday, February 1st according to the government instructions we are allowed to and that will be grades one through 12 so we're excited about that we're all teachers the administ administrative team here we're all very much involved in the day-to-day -day learning and lives of the young people so we're all really looking forward to seeing them again so i'll just uh i'll just introduce real quickly uh, our deputy head of school Sindhu and our head of admissions, Malini. Uh, Malini and Sindhu, would you like to introduce yourselves? And I will ask others if you could please mute your microphones and turn off your cameras uh, so that we have a more effective video conference and a video call. Sindhu, Malini, please say hi. Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome uh, to the virtual open house. And hopefully, one of these days, you'll be able to come and come to campus and uh, take a tour in person as well. Good morning, everybody. Hi, I'm Malini Kejriwal. Welcome to the virtual open house. Great, so we'll get started. Uh, the format is going to be that we'll do about 20 minutes of presenting and tell you a little bit about the story of the school. We will try to take your questions as we roll along. And then there are, there's a school tour planned. Sindhu is at the campus right now, and she will do a virtual school tour. And there are some breakout rooms about the various programs, the various grade levels and age levels, and about the admissions process to answer your more detailed questions and your more personal questions later on. Feel free to use the chat box to ask questions. Uh, we will have an epic, we will have a uh, questions session at the end, but we'll uh, try to get going. 
I'll remind everyone once again, if you can turn off your cameras and your microphones, I think that will uh, allow us to have a smoother video call, okay? Um, so the next slide, please. So I'll, I'll just get started by saying that, that you can see there uh, in both of these first two slides, the last one and this one, first of all, that's our campus and uh, that's called the Kund. It's a gathering place where we have assemblies every Monday morning. You can see the colorful t-shirts that students are happy, uh, that this is a nice time for us to get together at the beginning of the week. And you'll see some students on stage there presenting. Oftentimes at the beginning of the week, what we do is we share uh, some of the achievements and accomplishments of the learners themselves and they explain to their classmates what they've been doing. It could be a computer coding club, a drama club, a chess club, anything like that. And uh, then the next slide you'll see was uh, a few years old, but you'll see that um, one of the differentiators of our school is that it's a very happy and joyful environment. Uh, that's deliberate, that's by design. Uh, the kids really enjoy themselves. The t-shirts and the school uniform are designed so that children are not intimidated, so that they can be themselves, they can ask questions, and they can learn in an open, free, and non-intimidating environment. Usually we start this presentation by watching the school film for two minutes. We have a little film that kind of shows you about the uh, school. Preet, do you want to run that? KCI's new campus is a hexagonal base structure which allows students to enhance their creativity. We've seen the kids grow as well as the school grow and the kind of community that we have built together with the school, it's amazing. more holistic than others and it's personally helping me focus on what I want to do in life rather than doing things like science and math. Hey! The learning was fun but still informative and there was a lot more practical stuff like experiments especially in the science classes. is an open-minded school which allows students to explore, learn and have fun at the same time. Hey! Casey is really home to me. For my kids, it's home away from home and it's everything that I wanted as a child for school but my kids are getting it. place I look forward to coming every single day. Casey is more like my family. Casey is pretty much a way of life over here. I like Casey from the moon and back. Great, thanks Preet. Uh, so Sindhu and Mani, can you um, just describe for me in a few words what you think are some of the main characteristics and main features of KC High? Mani, want to go first or? You can start. No sure. problem. Sure. Um, so I think it's very energetic. The, the whole vibe is very energetic and dynamic. Uh, very uh, student-centered. The teachers are extremely caring and uh, uh, nurturing 
as uh, Mick already mentioned, um, you know, learners are allowed to just be themselves, ask questions. And um, also, I think it's um, the balance between, you know, academic rigor and all the, you know, uh, co-curricular activities is, is just, uh, is just, is just great. Uh, Malni? Yeah. Two words that come to my mind, fun and happy. It's a very happy environment. Kids love coming to school. Uh, parents are partners at KC High. We truly believe that, you know, parents have to be equally involved in a child's growth and learning journey. And that is practiced very much at KC High. And as Hindu said, yes, it's a great place to be in and energetic, enthusiastic. Uh, we focus on a lot of life skills. Uh, you know, that's also taught at the school. And we also do differentiated learning, which is one of the biggest USPs of the school. Great. Every, Thanks, learner, is, every and, learner is special at KCI. Great. Yeah. And um, I think it's important to point out that these attributes are very much by design and they're very much part of the history of the school and the vision that came from our founder, Bali Subaya, and from the governing board um, that has designed the school. So if we look look at Valley and some of the leaders from within Chennai and across India, the educational community across India. Uh, these are some of the visionaries that set the vision of the school, the mission, its strategy. And uh, these attributes of being a joyful, non-intimidating environment, being so energetic and combining academic rigor with playfulness uh, is something that is has been done very deliberately by people who have thought hard, have studied hard, have been leaders within the educational world and the business world. Valley herself, uh, she went to the United States in the 1990s where she studied education at Tufts and at Harvard. And she thought about what she was seeing and this kid-centered, and that's the name of the school, KC High stands for Kid Central, this kid-centered learning focus uh, philosophy that was new in the US at the time and this idea that children should be allowed to learn, to express themselves, to play, to ask questions, uh, to play sports, to follow their own dreams and their own initiatives. Uh, she thought, let's bring this back to my hometown of Chennai. And she came back in uh, the late 1990s and started the school just as a, uh, an after school activity center. So if we look at the timeline of the school, uh, Cindy was there right at the beginning. Um, can we see the next slide, please, Preet? Yeah, her idea was that we really need these two things, um, and these are the two main hallmarks of KC High, that yes, we want a high quality education. We want every child to learn and to learn well, and we want academic rigor and the importance of traditional learning of textbook learning of making sure kids know their math their science their english their hindi their tamil etc is really important but at the same time we want social consciousness personality development uh, allowing kids to be themselves allowing them to be holistic learners who play sports who do the arts who learn how to become good citizens who learn how to cooperate who learn teamwork etc so these are the two hallmarks of KC High, and this is what the school is designed for. Uh, if we look at the timeline, I think, and the vision and the model and the learning, they're all, um, they're all designed around these ideas, these central ideas. And one of the things that you will see is that the coordinators, the leadership team, uh, we're all focused on learning and we're all experienced teachers ourselves. Valley herself was a teacher at many schools before she went to the US and she was even a teacher in the US. So you look at the leadership team there and you find that all of us have a lot of experience as classroom teachers and that we come to decision making based on what's best for learners, what's best for the school, what's best for the kids and with a wealth of experience about uh, how schools work, how learning works, 
and what's best for kids. So we have two campuses you see there. Uh, you saw the previous team was um, our coordinators from the Olympia Panache campus. That's where we have uh, grades pre-kindergarten to grade 12. And the next slide, you'll see that we have coordinators from our Ranjit Road campus, which is where our history is in Kotaparam. And we have um, a pre-kindergarten and kindergarten course there. There are only about 100 to 200 students there. So here's a little bit about the timeline. Uh, Sindhu, you've been there. Um, I've been here about five years. Uh, Molly, you've been here about, what, seven or eight years? Is that about seven right? Seven years, Mr. Mick, seven years. Seven years. And Sindhu, uh, I won't tell any secrets about when you joined, but let's just say you've been there through the whole experience. And uh, can you say a little bit about the history of the school? Uh, sure. So when, as uh, uh, Mick said, you know, when Bali came back and, uh, you know, she decided to start the after school program, it was very popular uh, because kids would come uh, from their regular schools, uh, come to the after school program, experiment, explore, have a snack, finish their homework, and they would be uh, ready to be picked up by, by 6.30 and it was, you know, a dinner and straight to bed. So the whole, I think, the idea of the after school uh, um, was really um, very popular uh, with parents, especially since uh, kids got to um, uh, sort of dabble with with things that they were learning, you know, um, through the textbook uh, in their regular school. So subsequently, you know, these parents um, had conversations with Vali about uh, uh, just just, you know, as next steps. Uh, perhaps starting um, grade one or, uh, you know, a, a, a pre-primary. Um, so the pre-primary and the you and me program uh, started uh, because of that. The idea stemmed from the parents. Uh, and uh, subsequently, we grew organically, adding one year at a, uh, one grade level a year. And then uh, we aligned ourselves to a board um, when we were, uh, you know, I think uh, in grade three, when we had grown up to grade three, which is called the dynamic dolphins. And uh, since then, I've seen two batches of uh, kids graduate. Uh, so it's been, uh, it, it's been, it's been a crazy journey. It's, there's been lots of learning. There's still a lot of learning. The school is still growing. Um, yeah, we are all learning together as a community. And uh, we hope, yeah, that it just, you know, continues to uh, uh, flourish. Great. Thanks, Sindhu. And I think uh, that is pretty much the story of the school. And the important thing is sort of the community comes first and the community came first. And it started as a very close-knit community of like-minded parents who wanted more activities, more learning, more joyfulness, more happiness for their children. And it started as an after-school center and then as a uh, school for very young children. And it started in one of Valley's relatives' houses. And they did things like, you know, convert a kitchen to a computer lab and convert a bedroom to a to a classroom. And then the kids finished grade one and it was time for them to go to another school, but they asked Valley, please, 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 can you add grade two? And then the kids finished grade two and they asked Valley, please, can you, can you add grade three? And that's the way the school grew. And it started as a community, but eventually we got to the point where we started thinking, well, maybe we're going to turn this into a full-fledged pre-K to grade 12 school. And that's when the design and the planning started for the shift to a bigger campus, which, of course, had to be uh, further out of town. And that's how we ended up in Navalor. And the board that was clearly aligned to our vision and clearly aligned to what we wanted to accomplish as a school community was the Cambridge Board often called the IGCSE board for grades kindergarten through grade 10. And then once the school got even bigger and we started to realize that these families have uh, big aspirations and they want to send their children to some of the best universities in the world, that's when we realized that the IB diploma was the best 
choice for grades 11 and 12. So now we have this mix between the Cambridge board in grades kindergarten through grade 10, and then the IB diploma in grades 11 and 12. And you can see there some of the features uh, of these educational systems. Uh, learning is made fun. We go way beyond the textbook. There's a lot of activity. It's internationally aligned and we have these international standards. They're well recognized by universities across the globe, including India. And there's a lot of innovation, uh, a lot of teacher training. Um, there's a lot of activities within the classroom and kids take ownership of their own education. And all of these things are very much aligned with our vision for what a school should be. So Cambridge and the IB and that combination of boards was really the best choice for us. We're very happy with both of these boards. We're very happy with these choices and we will continue with Cambridge and the IB for years to come. Moni, is there anything you want to add about that? Nothing, no, nothing is big. I think you've covered everything. Okay, great. So I, I know lately many of you must be asking what's been going on the past two years. Uh, that's been really important. Uh, luckily, we sort of, uh, we decided about six or seven years ago that we really needed to invest in technology and we need to make sure that these learners have access to the best technology tools. Um, so we were ready for this when it happened. Uh, we've done a lot of teacher training. We've been working on something called blended learning. Over the past two years, instead of just trying to teach traditional classes in the traditional way, we've been using the tools and we have this combination of activities that the teachers set for the children and the children take home and do offline and online instruction. So that's why we call it blended learning. We know that it's not good for kids to sit in front of a screen for seven hours a day, taking notes, listening to the teachers talk. So our uh, classes over the past two years have been very activity based. And we've even had some learning pods where we bring children together um, in housing societies, within families, within people's homes, following all the safety protocols, uh, doing things like physical education, uh, yoga, stretching, as you can see, uh, drama, lots of music, lots of activities. We call these the learning pods. They've been very successful and very popular, both with students and with parents. Is there anything you'd like to add to that, Sindhu? Uh, no, Mick. Okay, great. Do we have any questions so far, Preet? All right, on the chat box, let me see what, the, let me just uh, try to look at that and see how that, how that's um, going. I could read out uh, the question, And also question, I see Kirsten has raised a hand. Okay, what does differentiated learning mean? Great, okay, that's a great question. Should I take that or do you want to take it, Sindhu? Uh, go ahead, Mick. So <laughs> differentiated learning means that teachers have a professional responsibility to understand that all learners are different and each of those 22 kids sitting in the class is having a different experience. And we need to make sure that every single child in the classroom is learning. That means we need a blend of different kinds of approaches. We cannot just have a one size fits all uh, method of classroom instruction. So we have lots of activities, lots of group work, uh, lots of different ways of stimulating the brain. So there will be visual inputs, there will be audio inputs. The teacher won't just spend her time talking to the class because she realizes that some kids are not audio learners. They need the visual inputs. There will be a, a blend of lots of different kinds of activities. And especially, it's especially important that uh, the teacher realizes that um, the kids are at different levels and she needs to understand each kid and where she, that kid is so that she can match or he can match his teaching and his 
his classroom preparation and his lesson planning to the different abilities of the kids in the classroom. So it requires a lot of planning, a lot of collaboration, a lot of discussion amongst teachers about the learners, what makes them tick. Uh, teachers need to speak to each other, what's working in your classroom, what's not working. So that in a nutshell is what we call differentiated learning. A lot of this really comes from the medical profession. We realize that every human being is different. Every brain is different. So we need to try to customize the learning experience for each child, okay? Does that make sense, Sindhu? Do you wanna add anything to that? Uh, no, Mick. So yeah, everything, including differentiated assessment. Mm -hmm. So as every brain is different, absolutely. Thanks, Mick. I hope everybody is hearing me. You guys are hearing me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yes, Mick, another question that, that we get, get um, okay, great. Uh, sorry. Maybe. Another question that we have uh, commonly. Are you hearing okay? Somebody says she's yes. not hearing. I'm able to hear you, but to make this a. Yeah, you're loud and clear. There is a question in the chat box. It says, I have a question. This is from Sudha Rajgopal. I have a question related to this. Uh... I think it's related to okay. differentiated learning. Right, right. It's very specific to her child, Mick. Would you like me to read it out? Yeah, I, I, I see that. I, I see it. Um, well, okay, so this is, as you say, when we're talking about questions that are specific to a particular child, we'll try to take those later on. Uh, but uh, Suda, this is very much why we believe in differentiated education because we know that children are different and they do need different types of support. Uh, we do have some exceptional learners. We have all kinds of different types of learners. We need, we have kids who are three or four grade levels above where they're expected to be in mathematics. We have kids who are, uh, you know, voracious readers who have read at all kinds of levels. We have kids who speak many different languages and who want to study language. We have kids who are gifted and talented in music, in sports, etc. So we have to try to accommodate all of those learners. It's a big challenge and it oftentimes means that the teachers need to design a customized curriculum for the ch child. In particular, for example, we have many kids, not many, but we have a handful, 10 to 15, who are really high level athletes that hope someday to be on uh, the Olympic teams of India. And for them, some of them are only coming to school two or three days per week because they have to train so much. And no surprise, these kids are typically very good students because they have so much self-discipline. So we're willing to accommodate them. We're willing to design individualized education programs for kids who need them, okay? Uh, yeah, so um, also I saw the question about Cambridge or IB. Should I take that one, Sindhu, or do you want to take it? Uh, so, Ramya, that's sort of a very simple question. Right New batches have passed out from 12th grade. Go ahead, Sindhu. You want to do the Cambridge or IB, or do you uh, want me no, to? No, I thought you'd already answered that. I don't know if the question came before you spoke about the whole Cambridge and IB. Um, yeah, so, well, you know, it's a good to, question. Yeah. Why not just do the IB all the way through, right? We like Cambridge, and Cambridge gives the type of structure that matches our school community, our teachers, our parents. They have some uh, what we call checkpoints and tests and exams. They have uh, exams at the end of grade 10, which we're all very familiar with. We think that Cambridge works really well through grade 10. But then there's no doubt that in grades 11 and 12, the IB diploma is the best university preparation program for top-notch universities. It is extremely rigorous and extremely demanding. In the PYP and the MYP, which are the IB's programs for the primary years and the middle years, they're a little bit more experimental and a little bit riskier for our school community 
and in particular for some of our teachers who um, like the structure that Cambridge offers. And so we're very, very happy with the IGCSE, with the Cambridge primary and the Cambridge lower secondary programs, and we're going to stick with them for years to come. We feel like this system works really well and it matches our school community. Now, how does differentiated assessment work? Why, why, don't you uh, why don't you take those two questions, Sindhu? They're very good questions um, about differentiated assessment. And first, we can say uh, which second language options. Uh, I'm going to tell well, that, yeah. Essentially, the second language options that we offer are Hindi, Tamil, Spanish, and French. Uh, we do have one or two kids studying German, but those are our options. So, Sindhu, why don't you explain? Um, how differentiated assessment works? Um, so what we mean by differentiated assessment is just not, for example, if you're get, um, giving a paper, uh, make having that paper, uh, uh, setting that paper in three different ways for some of those who might want to be challenged, uh, some of uh, those who might need a little support, but also it's about giving a range of different kinds of assessments. Uh, so just besides the pen and paper test, we also have other forms of assessing uh, learning, right? So from presentations uh, to debates, um, to uh, group activity, uh, to field work and all of that. So when we're talking about differentiated assessments, it's not only just the levels, but also the kind of the range of assessments uh, that the teachers uh, plan and um, uh, uh, plan and deliver to the students. Right. right. So I think we do a lot more assessment than just taking tests and taking exams. We realize that taking tests and taking exams is important. It's one of many skills that students need to learn, and we do. Uh, use some exams and some tests, but we have many, many other forms of assessments. So whether it's writing essays or doing performances or working in groups or debating or doing projects or doing presentations where students, for example, from a business class might present to a group of investors about their business plan. All of these things are part of the types of assessments that we do, okay? Um, so one, uh, one thing before we uh, wrap up here, I think we've got uh, about 10 or 15 minutes left to take some more questions. Um, one thing that we want to emphasize is that we as the school leadership team understand that our teachers are our biggest asset and we create a very positive workplace environment and we understand teachers and what teachers want and what teachers need and we create an environment where teachers are happy, where they're joyful, where they love to come to work because this whole project depends first and foremost upon the teachers. And when you have a wonderful teacher who's happy at work and she knows how to manage a classroom or he knows how to manage a classroom, that classroom experience becomes one of the special places in the world. One of the happiest moments in a child's life is when he or she is in a well-managed classroom. So uh, we take a lot of time to make sure that teachers are trained well, that they get the respect that they need, that we insist on respect for teachers at every level of the school, including, of course, the school administration, the parents, the students, and not only teachers, but every member of the school community. So we deliberately try to keep a happy work environment. And we've been very fortunate, especially in the past two years, when so many schools have seen challenges with teachers leaving to keep our teachers teacher retention and teacher recruitment are two of our biggest priorities as a school. And we make sure that teachers get the autonomy, the respect, the time and the training that they need. So we have an extensive professional development program. 
what we know is that we know that teachers love to learn. They want to learn about some of the questions you're asking about. Differentiated assessment. How do you do it? What is differentiated learning? All of these modern professional techniques, teachers really want to learn about them. So we give them the time and the training that they need to do their job well. And they can feel that support. And that's why we have uh, good teacher retention. Sindhu, anything you want to add to that about that? So we also, I just want to add, um, besides the um, professional development workshops that uh, teachers engage in school once a month, um, we also encourage them to pursue um, uh, some of them, you know, on their own. So lots of our teachers, while taking part in uh, uh, school-related PDs, they're also, in, also pursuing courses on their own on Coursera, um, education related diploma courses and all of that, which is over a year, sometimes six months. Um, and we're constantly sharing all these opportunities uh, with the teachers. <clears throat> yes, thanks, Sindhu. And I see there's a question about shifting to the IB board. I'll take that in a minute. Uh, I think that's Srinivasan who asked that question. Uh, before, I'd just like to mention a couple of other things. Uh, one of the reasons that we moved to the big campus and we insisted on the excellent facilities is because our kids love sports and we think sports is great for them and we want to support them in terms of achieving their dreams and many of them have deep dreams associated with their various sports uh, these are five of the sports that we do very well of course uh, kids play all kinds of sports um, and we have a campus that is designed to provide excellent facilities in soccer, basketball, and all of these sports. And it's a big part of our program. We do do uh, sports tournaments outside of school. We do have organized sports teams, but we do a lot of physical education within the academic curriculum as well. And another thing that I think is really important about our school that we should mention is what we call service learning. And that means that our students get involved in all kinds of projects with local community organizations, whether that's um, farming or teaching or fitness or cleaning up a beach um, or working with other students in other schools. Um, we see that community projects are a very important part of our children's education and uh, we value this very much. We see it as just another important way of learning in addition to the academic learning that goes on at campus. Uh, Malini, would you like to add anything about those projects or service learning? No, Mr. Mick, I think you've covered it. Okay, uh, so I see there's one question, I'll take it um, about uh, how do you shift from IGCSE to IB? from grade 10 to grade 11. Well, I think that the key point here, and it's one of the reasons why we like Cambridge, is that the IGC exams are a very rigorous, internationally standardized set of exams that come at the end of grade 10, and that our students are very well prepared for the IGCSE exams, and they do well, and that helps them in grades 11 and 12, because the IB also has a set of rigorous exams at the end of grade 12. However, the IB itself, when we talk about the academic rigor, what we're also talking about is within all of their subjects and some additional subjects, such as theory of knowledge, or we call it TOK, within all of their subjects, they usually have to do research, write papers, uh, give presentations, um, do science experiments, even in mathematics, they have to write a long paper in which they investigate some topic of mathematics that's very interesting to them. So they need a lot of academic skills in addition to the skill of preparing for exams. And so we have programs in grades 9 and 10, IB readiness, where we teach them research skills, academic writing, uh, how to write a bibliography, 
how to form an academic argument, how to do citations, how to do research on the internet, and we supplement the IGCSE course with that type of learning. For that reason, uh, it's very difficult for us to take students from other boards coming into grade 11. They really need to have established themselves as outstanding students because they've missed this sort of uh, academic rigor and academic preparation. A lot of this happens in grade 10. Uh, currently, the 10th graders are about to take a set of exams in February and March. And then we have uh, many IB readiness classes where we supplement Just the IGCSE curriculum I mean. to help them get ready for the academic demands of grades 11 and 12. Would you like to add anything to that, Sindhu? Okay, so I hope that answers the question. Um, uh, do we have any other questions? <clears throat> You can feel free to raise typing. your hand if you'd like. Yeah. Yes. So some of them I've just been typing. We've been posting the links, Mick. But anyone right. uh, who has a question, Ganesh. Go ahead, Ganesh. I see Ganesh. Ganesh, you can turn on your microphone and your camera and ask a question if you would like. Yeah, hi, Mike. Hi, Ganesh. Uh, let me know what's the student uh, is your issue for grade one. Sindhu, why don't you answer that? Or would you like me to? Um, go ahead, Mick. <laughs> so I'll just talk a little okay. bit about how, yeah. No, no, I, I, I can take that. Um, so when we talk about ratio, we talk about students and their homeroom teachers and all the specialists that work with the students. So typically it could, uh, you know, be in the... Uh, five, five to one. Uh, but when you take a classroom, a typical grade one classroom, we have three sections. We have up to about 22 to 24 students per section. And at any given point of time, we have two homeroom teachers for each section, right? And uh, these homeroom teachers, uh, uh, you know, handle all subjects. Uh, they plan together. So while one teacher, of uh, you know, might be the main teacher for that session taking science, then you have the second teacher sort of co-facilitating and, um, uh, and working with that main teacher. But besides that, we have uh, specialists in arts. We have, um, uh, you know, specialists who, uh, who do movement with the students and not to mention all the uh, coaches related to gymnastics, uh, basketball, table tennis, chess, uh, and so on. So typically, I would say uh, five is to one. <clears throat> Thank you, Sindhu. And I, I should mention counselors as well. We have a, a big team of counselors, about eight uh, counselors and learning support specialists. So uh, every child gets a lot of individual attention. I see uh, Samya's asked a question. Would kids going to KC High be able to go to college in India? Absolutely. Uh, there are some colleges in India which are um, more popular with the kids. I think they have lots of choices. Once they experience this kind of education, they're certainly looking for a college experience which um, suits them, in which they're able to discuss, ask questions, uh, do research, do group, group work. Uh, so they're looking for really interesting colleges. So we've had students go to Kriya University, to Plaksha University, to Ashoka University. And uh, we have students going to universities all across India and all across the world. So absolutely, I think one key point here is uh, students who do well within the IB program, really the world is open to them. They can go to top universities either within India or anywhere in the world. But of course, the key point is they should do well, right? Okay, so I think Sindhu already answered the question about student-teacher ratio. It is five to one, um, five students per teacher, but that group of teachers includes our counselors, our librarians, our specialists, our PE teachers, et cetera. But the important point is that um, every student gets a lot of individual attention. I believe, Shakti, that uh, there's a link there where you can read about 
the uh, our graduates and where they've gone to colleges and universities. Um, Ramya, did you have a question? Okay, I, I'm not hearing that question. I, okay. Um, if there are no other questions, we can go on to the breakout rooms. Uh, you can see the links. Uh, Gayatri, Gayatri has a question. Go ahead, Gayatri. Isha, do you have a question? Yeah, make hi. Yeah, yeah, hi, make hi. Good morning. Uh, I would like to know that my daughter is now currently in uh, ICSC board. And I'm looking for her for grade 11 and 12. Uh, so, so since you said it's IB board, I want to know how would uh, would the transition be for her to uh, move from an uh, ICSC into an IB board? Sure. Let me... Ramya, are you there? Ramya, I would ask Ramya to please mute so that I can hear the question better. Yeah. Um, Okay, I, I, I think I understood that, Isha. That is, your daughter is currently in ICSE and she's considering transferring to the IB board and you want to know how difficult that transition would be? Yes. Yeah, well, it, of course, it depends a lot on the student. And um, I think there are a few things that will make it particularly challenging. And one of those things is academic writing and being able to write uh, essays with a clear focus and to be able to do investigations such as science labs and commentaries within English and economics. So there is a lot of academic writing. We try to work hard on these skills in grades six through 10, actually throughout the curriculum. So our KC learners, by the time they come into 11th grade, they are usually good writers. I think it's important that she writes well and that she has a good foundation in writing and not just writing exams, but in writing her own opinions in being able to form academic arguments in being able to back up her arguments with evidence. Uh, the other thing that's so important is research skills. So she should have a lot of academic curiosity and she should know how to use the internet, uh, how to find excellent sources for the topics that she's most interested in. But in the end, it's still school and students who have done well within the ICSE typically will also do well within the IB. I would say the first few months will be kind of challenging because suddenly she's in an environment where she's being asked for her opinion, she's being asked to present, she's being asked to write essays, she's being asked to discuss what she's learned with her classmates and her teachers. And there is a steep learning curve for the first few months. But what we find is students who have an ICSE background, typically they have a really good foundation in the content knowledge. And you know, they know the science, for example. They know, they know cell theory, they know Newton's laws, they know how to balance equations. And that foundation is really important. But in the first few months, they'll really need to uh, learn how to do this academic research and academic writing. But I think most importantly, if she has a good foundation in the fundamental skills of writing, reading, and mathematics, and analyzing data, then she'll be okay. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Sure. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of kids taking Tamil. Um, it is, it is uh, of course, it's... Um, we do conversational Tamil in, in addition to choosing Tamil as a second language. So uh, we have an excellent Tamil teaching staff. 
I would say, you know, typically there would be somewhere between five and 10 kids in a Tamil class. I think it's not as popular as Hindi and Spanish, but uh, so the class sizes tend to be a little bit smaller. Okay. Um, I think we'll just, yeah. So let, let's see if there are any other questions. So Kotaparam campus. Oh, interesting. Sindhu, do you want to just discuss real quickly? Right now we're going through kindergarten, but we're going to open up a grade one and grade two uh, experimental class in Kotaparam from the middle of February. Uh, right. Yeah. Oh, you've said it. So, oh, Vikram, said it. Yeah, you're right. We are kind of similar in philosophy to uh, Montessori, but we do, I would say we probably insist on a little bit more academic rigor. It's a different set of challenges for kids coming out of Montessori backgrounds, uh, but they uh, do pretty well and they really love it. But there is certainly more emphasis on things like reading, writing, and times tables. Uh, we do have graduates that pursue engineering and medicine in India. It is rather difficult. Um, it is a big challenge. I think some of our students that want to do engineering or medicine in India, they consider possibly going to a different board in grades 11 and 12. Uh, and they do get external coaching without a doubt because we do not train kids for uh, things like the JEET or uh, the, med the medical college exams, et cetera. Uh, and it is a very challenging, a very challenging, just like any school really, uh, pathway to try to get into engineering and medicine courses within India. So um, I think I'm gonna leave it at that for now. And any further questions we can take uh, in the breakout rooms. Am I missing anything important there? Um, no, Mr. Mick. I think we can answer specific questions in the breakout rooms, anything related to admissions can be answered and anything related to IGCSE or the pre-primary grade levels. I think the breakout rooms would be able to help them with their questions. Right. But now right. we'll go okay, to the campus great. tour, right? Yes, Reed? yes, yes, Sindhu, correct. And so first we'll have the campus tour and then we'll go to the breakout rooms. So Sindhu? Uh, right, I'll exit this meeting. and I'll Put on your mask, please. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Sindhu on will cue. give you a quick tour of the facilities. And then we have a we have That's a useful. Ranjit Road campus tour as well. Thank you very much for your participation. It's been some great questions, and it's been nice uh, having an opportunity to chat with all of you. Please stay safe and have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good one. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, Hi, Preet. Can you hear me? Awesome. These are new lotuses, huh? Release? Nice. Wow. Are we ready? Can we start? Okay, okay I'll just wait. Just let me know when to start, okay? These little tadpoles, huh? Uh, so cute. Good, uh, puppies. Oh, guppies. Yeah, I can see the full-grown guppies. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, uh, gardener put it, uh. Oh, very nice, bhai, yeah? uh, 
uh, Preet. If you're just joining or you're I think you need to stand closer, otherwise it won't pick up your audio. chat box on the right. You can stand the here so I will know what you're shooting and I can just. The link is there. You can go check that link. Um, if you click on that link, you will see that uh, Sindhu is taking the tour there. Yeah, Preet? Yes, Kirish. Uh, Mike, sorry. Is the link not working? No, for me it's not working. Yeah. Yeah. New link, what's up? I'm checking that right now. Thanks, uh, Ganesh. Mr. Ganesh, you just need to click on the link. I just clicked. It seems to be. That crazy I open out. Yeah, it seems to be working. Yeah, it seems to be working. It's working now. It's working yes. now. Yes. Oh, so can you you after you on that link, turn the link. other, the other, close the close other, other link. Other link. So the link has been typed in the chat box. It says Navalor Campus Tour. Please click on that link. And it will take you to the to the to the virtual campus tour. Sorry, ma'am. Uh, will you please uh, enter the link in the chat box again? It is there. Yeah, I just I just added it again. I just I just added it again. You see it? Thank you so much. Great. Have you got it now, Ganesh? Great. Have you got it now, Ganesh? Is there anybody else who has? Is there anybody else who has a question? Else a question? Rinko, Nandini. Rinko, Nandini. Please click on. Please click on. Yeah, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, I can also yes, hear Mr. speaking. Uh, yes, go ahead, please. please. Are we on the same meet? We're having a, we're having a, okay. quite a few people are um, having difficulty joining the tour. So oh, just okay. pause for a second. Sure. Um, Hi, I clicked through the tour uh, link. Nasri. Um, I've just clicked through the tour link and we've come back to the same room it looks like breath can you put the link to the tour in the chat box it's, it's in there twice and oh okay sorry uh but but i'm getting a different you might need to change your um tab change and then get out of this one Okay, I'll put it in, I'll put in the link one more time then I'm going to quit this meeting. Maybe that's part of the problem. Okay, yes, Nitesh, we will share the link to the breakout room as well. So you have to see the, the chat box on the right, or you can look at the little text box on the lower right and open that up, and then you'll see all the links in blue. Oh, cute. Sindhu, how many how many people do we have in the tour now? We have more than thirty, so uh, I think. Yeah, I only think, Vijay can see. Vijay, how many people do we have? Twenty-seven. Yeah, I, think we can get I think we'll begin. Okay, great. All right. Hi, everyone. So right now I'm standing outside the building. So typically this is the entrance, uh, Vijay. So the car. Wave, Baya. That's Lakshmi Baya. 
He's been with the school for a very, very long time. Knows every car, knows every student by name, knows the parents, the car plates, you name it. And um, that's Baya. Yes, Baya. That's Ranjan Baya. So this is uh, where the kids come in. So the uh, they are light over here, and they go in that way. But I'm going to take you through the reception. Please come. So when you come for admission inquiries, typically this is where you would come uh, and Swati at the reception desk will help you with the formalities. And on the floor, you will see the uh, KC logo. This was actually designed by one of our after school students, Priyanka, uh, very, very, very many years ago. And uh, it's typically, it's like circle time. It could be interpreted in different ways, but um, how she, um, um, envisioned is basically kids holding hands and collaborating and just, you know, just sitting down or they could be looking up at stars. <clears throat> so first I'm going to take you to the pre-primary area. So the pre-primary area, as you can see, is on the ground floor. And I'm just going to show you one of the classrooms that's open. So there are multiple classrooms on the ground floor uh, for pre-primary. Unfortunately, the kids uh, are not yet back on campus. We can't wait for the day they'll come back because it's uh, been almost two years. But uh, we do continue to have learning pods for uh, the pre-primary students as well. So they have these little cubbies at their height. They come, leave their footwear, their bags, their snacks. Um, their little learning material. So they have all these independent cubbies and the furniture is also designed that it's very light so they can move it around. We teach them a lot of independence at the stage to uh, operate their own footwear, to clean up after themselves. <clears throat> Why don't we go to the pool? That looks like a mini swimming pool. We never fill water in it. Uh, but it's used for lots of alternate activities. Uh, they construct mazes, uh, sometimes